Hello everyone. Earlier this week, TFT released 20 brand new artifacts as well as 5 new support items in the recent patch, and there's a ton of interesting tech that comes with them. I waited a bit for the Eminent V patch before releasing this just in case Riot threw a curveball in there. In this video, I'll not only discuss what each of these artifacts do, but also show a visual ranking on who I think are the best users and why. But very quickly, if you like this content and want to see more, please let me know in the comments. It really means a lot. Starting with Blighting Jewel. Dealing magic damage reduces the target's magic resist by 3. If the magic resist is 0, this grants the holder 5 mana instead. This is obviously very good on units that have multiple instances of magic damage. This also has a lot of synergy with like Natural Shred, such as Static Shiv or Ionic Spark, as this reduces the amount of procs needed to bring the magic resist to 0. The best users are obviously going to be Timo and Morgana, as their damage is very uh, instanced. They have lots of small procs of damage, and they have a lot of application to the whole board. So uh, Timo and Morgana are going to be hitting a lot of units for a small instances of magic damage, and they will very quickly be generating mana from that as, as if anything, if any unit's magic resist is zero and they're hitting it, they're getting mana, so it's just kind of a chain reaction on those. Another decent user is uh, Syndra, who, for the same reason, has multiple instances of magic damage in her spell, but is more of a single target unit. Uh, so it's not quite as good as the first two, but definitely a good unit with this item. Going further along, we just have units with, with either less uptime or less applicability. So the better units are the ones that can apply it more often to more units. And the lower you go, the harder it is to apply to multiple units, or the more infrequent it is that they will do so. Corrupt Vampire Acceptor. Attacks deal an additional 50% AD as physical damage, and heal the holder for the damage dealt. Uh, the holder also cannot cast their ability or gain mana, and they get 50 attack speed from the raw stats. Uh, the way to look at this item is to completely disregard what the unit does and instead focus on the traits and the natural stats of the user because th there's no casting so like you're thinking about like all these units that like can use it well but you have to actually consider what they're giving up in their comp and what they're giving up like as a whole like how much of their damage is reliant on their cast in the first place so people might like look at something like kane or yone but uh without their cast they're just Reapers, which uh, is not as good as it might seem. Uh, so the best user is probably Gnar, just because his passive, which isn't tied to his cast, it's just something he has, uh, gives him a ton of AD, and uh, everything else seems pretty good. Other units with good traits are Kiana Kha'Zix, who are our Heavenly Duelist, two traits that would work really well with this. Heavenly Reaper, which similarly would work very well with this. Assuming you have a 4 Reaper active. Uh, then you have Set, who is a Faded unit with a passive that gives him AD. Uh, Set is no longer a CC bot, but instead he just punches things. But he has a lot of AD, and he can get more from Faded, so he can punch people really hard. Uh, Yasuo and Aphelios are in the same vein. Uh, they don't have the, a passive. Well, Yasuo does, but it doesn't really matter here. They're just units that have decent AD. Uh, they can Yasuo's a duelist, so he can benefit quite well. Aphelios is a sniper. Uh, he benefits. And then there's also Irelia, who isn't really cast for Alliance anyway. So you're kind of just giving her good stats. Then slightly worse than the ones mentioned, uh, you have just the other duelists who uh, like have one good trait. And then one okay trait. Dragon Lord not, doesn't do that much. It's just more of a support trait. Uh, Ink Shadow, not terrible, but doesn't do that much. Umbral doesn't do much. Fortune doesn't do anything. And then below that, just slightly worse. Curse Blade, uh, 15 8 attack speed, 20 MR. The attacks reduce the target's health by 3%. 13 attacks on the same target reduce their star level by 1. Reducing star level is like so. There's like a certain like amount of stats you get for star level. It goes 100, 180, and then I think like 324. 
you're, you're essentially reducing their stats by like 45 percent which is pretty decent uh there aren't that many units with a uh, good synergy with this the best users are just the ones that you are inclined to go attack speed on which i would say borrowed is the only unit that like you just want purely attack speed other units that i mean can do well with attack speed might have a Ginsu user too Azure Phileos, Susana Sivir, Irelia. Otherwise, you just kind of put this on whatever units you on like a secondary unit that is going to be attacking the enemy main tank. Uh, I think centered units are probably better for this. So like Soraka, Zero, Ari are units that you probably want to put in the center of your back line. And then other potential users are just like random duelists or random backliner that isn't getting items. This item isn't very good, apart from the specific niche of shredding, like, giga tanks. Fishbones. This one is broken. And I'll explain why, because there's something that people haven't considered. Uh, you got 30 AD, 30 attack speed, doubles the holder's range and causes each of their attacks to target a random enemy. So this is generically good because it allows targets to avoid hitting the main tank. Uh, what people haven't considered is that some casts that are being used on anyone but the main tank will pretty much instantly win a fight. The best users are the ones that, if they cast on something that isn't the main tank, their whole backline is probably dead. Uh, so that would include stuff like Kaisa, Zaya. Another generic good user is Cogmall. He just gets, he can just hit anyone at any point in time for free. He doesn't really care about random target. His autos don't do anything. Uh, other snipers just get good value. Uh, Tristana can ran it works like PBE for Tristana. She just randomly one shot something. This is even good on AP users that want to hit backline. So stuff like Zoe, Syndra, Lissandra. And then otherwise, this item is not very good on melee champions. It doesn't really do enough. Uh, Yone is a weird one. It shouldn't interact with this spell, but I haven't actually got into try it it might it might mess up it more than likely it just messes up his ability to assassinate uh but i don't actually know for sure so i'll give him some benefit of the doubt written idol 200 health 25 armor 25 mr shields have 50 percent of their value converted to max health instead this item is good on shielders the best being the ones with the bigger or more frequent shields. This is most likely going to be found on your typical Giga tank, your three star, three cost, your Tom Cam Thresh Alawi. Also works well on Yasuo, uh, Orn. They have pretty big shields. Other shielders are fine, but it's just not as good. One thing to note is that there's other sources of shields to consider. Tattoo of Protection is pretty good with this. Umbral Shield from the trait is fine. Jana shields units, but their recipient isn't consistent, so there's no guaranteeing how often a certain target is going to be shielded. Horizon Focus gives 250 health, 15 mana, 20 armor, 20 MR. Stunning an enemy causes lightning to strike them, dealing 30% of their max health as magic damage. So this is clearly good on units that stun preferably a lot of units. The best user, uh, to no one's surprise, is going to be Nautilus. Uh, it's got tank stats for him, and he hits a ton of units with his AoE. Uh, another good user is Lux. Uh, another good user is Lux. She doesn't hit that many units, but, uh, there aren't that many stuns to begin with, and she hits two semi-reliably and with pretty good uptime. Another thing to note is that she can semi-reliably hit backline carries, so... Apart from those two, the drop-off is a bit high. For how good the item is, there are some other AoE stuns like Rek'Sai, Udir, but those aren't super reliable or frequent. And then Lissandra is a single target stun, but this proc can help her execute units with her ability and it'll make her more likely to drop loot, so it's fine. And then the other stuns are okay, but I probably wouldn't take it on them. Innervating Locket, uh, 150 health, 15 mana. The holder gains 2% of their total mana whenever they're hit by an attack. Each cast restores 20% of the holder's maximum health over 3 seconds. Uh, this is just very good. Uh, the best users are probably going to be Silas. 
just because he casts very frequently and he can have a lot of health. Other decent users are Diana, because in her cast, she's not mana lock, so she will be getting a good amount of uptime with this. Galio, because he taunts, so there'll be a lot of units to fund his mana, and he'll just be rapid casting. I'd say the next level of units that are good with this are shielders or maximum health gainers, because they what they're not getting from their cast is healing, so I think it's a little bit better to get something that they aren't getting than to get more of something that they are. So I think units that are getting a shield but they aren't healing uh, would benefit more from having healing than getting more healing. Plus the shield protects them from... Like, it, the shield ensures that they're going to get the value from the healing anyway. One thing I forgot when making this list is that this is probably okay on the the gain RNMR users in their cat, like Rek'Sai Jax. Uh, more so Rek'Sai, because Rek'Sai isn't mana locked, so it's probably okay. But if I see this, I'm probably just going to force Silas. Which vein? 15 mana, 30 AP. After each ability cast, deals 180 bonus damage. Damage increases based on stage. So... Pretty much, the more frequent the casting, the better the user. The best user is probably Kindred because it better synergizes with their single target. But there's also Kogma and Timo who this will cover a weakness in that they struggle with single target. They struggle with the front line, so this will help them a lot, and they have it a lot of uptime. Syndra is also quite good, but her low cooldown isn't quite as good as the others. Other units that have low mana costs can do decent with this. Otherwise, it's just generically good on mages. Light Shield's Crest, 50 armor, 50 MR. Every 3 seconds, Shield's the lowest percent health ally for 50% of the holder's magic resist. On death, grants the shield to all allies. I think this one is going to be a bit underrated. It's got good stats, just as a baseline. 50 armor and 50 MR is quite a lot. And there's a lot of decent synergy. It's a little weird in that units that are going to have high armor and MR aren't necessarily going to be wanting more from the stats but i think it's fine anyway because the shielding shielding is better on units that have longer lasting health so units with high armor and mr or damage reduction are going to be benefiting from shielding a lot more so the best users are probably going to be faded or behemoths uh, you would put this you could put this on your main tank you could also put this on an off tank if they're going to be putting if they're just going to have stuff if they're going to have other items. You know, there are some units that also just have a lot of good synergy with Arm and MR, such as Yasuo Thresh, Malphite Chen. So those are probably going to be the best users of this item, whether they're the main tank or not for the comp. Otherwise, uh, other behemoths or wardens will benefit a lot. Bruisers benefit less in that they like the stats from the item, but they aren't going to be gaining a lot from the shield because the shield is a relatively small amount of their maximum health. Otherwise, this item is acceptable just as a generic frontline item on a random frontline unit. I'm just, this one's a bit annoying. 30 AD, 30 AP. 100% of overkill damage plus 100 is dealt as magic damage to three enemies. This one, I think, is quite hard to use because there isn't that much overkill damage in the set. There aren't, like, many large instances of damage. You have, like, big casts like Kai'Sa or Zaya or Lissandra, but those are divided into multiple parts, so I don't think that would work. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm, not, I'm going to assume that the multiple instances of damage are counted separately for overkill, and thus they aren't going to benefit much. The big casters of this set, I'd say, are like Caitlyn, uh, Azir, I guess, does a lot of damage. Ghostly, like units, stuff like Sun and Kindred, if you're playing Ghostly Comp. Otherwise, you probably need a lot of work like a lot of supports like if you stacks of a it could be maybe be okay on like Huey, Kogma, Lilia they have like somewhat decent damage if you give them like a death cap or something maybe they'll be more likely to be overkill damage this one's probably gonna be one of if not the hardest one to figure out I'm not sure myself so I mean maybe someone else will figure out what is best with this one Middens, 60 attack speed, shrinks the holder, granting them increased move speed, 20% damage reduction, and immunity to chill. Chill being uh, attack speed reductions. I think there's only one source of chill anyway, which is Morgana. So, I don't know how useful that is. Oh, and I guess, what, uh, Eternal Winter? 
Uh, this is just a generically decent item. 60 attack speed is good. Not everyone uses the damage reduction well. This is a generically good item. All the stats are like good on a lot of units. The best users are probably going to be the ones that benefit from everything. But even at the lowest degrees of separation, this is probably still pretty good on most of the units. The best units are probably going to be like Lee Sin, Darius, Kiana. Uh, they just benefit from everything this item has to offer. And they are duelists, but they can be played with other traits, which I'll differentiate from Bullet Bear, as he's more tied to the duelist trait. I don't think Vertical Ink Shadow Volleyball Carry is that common, but uh, maybe with this item it's not bad. Kenyone, good units with it. They don't hate attack speed. Everything else is nice. As you go down, it's just units that like some part of it, but don't necessarily want everything. Melee units are generally going to be better than ranged units, just because they care more about the move speed, the damage reduction. Uh, more likely to be chilled. Prowler's Claw, 25 AD, 25 crit. After killing a target, she had negative effects and dashed to the furthest target within 4 hexes. The next two critical attacks deal 60% bonus critical strike damage. This one's probably going to be very good, but it's hard to plan ahead, so this adds another level of fight RNG that's very hard for the player, the user, to account for. The best users probably are just ones that indiscriminately want to go around killing things. Kane, Lucin, Nar, Felix probably don't really care about what they're killing. They're most likely not going to be jumping onto a tank. Yonie is a bit weird because he might mess up his dash with this. It's hard to tell. Like, he might dash onto something and then his cast might make him dash away from the targets. On the other hand, the dash AI of Kiana is probably going to benefit her. Uh, as long as the sensor backline, she'll just stay hitting multiple units. But it's hard to tell. Wukong, same thing. And then other just other units that are going to be played as a carry. I keep having Diana on these as a potential carry because she can be played as a carry despite more often being a tank. Rapid Fire Cannon. 50% attack speed. Gain 1 attack range. Increased by 1 when the holder kills an enemy. This looks like a Cogma item. I don't really know how good this would be on other units. Not many other units care that much about range considering that they're still going to be hitting the closest targets that's how the range works anyway so unlike fish bones which the drawback is actually the main benefit and this one it's just like this is probably just a worse fish bones i'd say the only case where it benefits is cogmal like i said because he loves attack range he likes being able to cast on the back line it could be okay on like one liners that you'd want to protect a little bit. Duelists, maybe. Lissandra, protect her a little bit. Yone, maybe. It might mess up. I don't think it interacts with this cast. Uh, so he might get safety early on, but it also delays his ability to cast onto the backline if you second throw him. Could be okay on like casters like Cinderella, Kaisa. But like I said before, the they're going to be hitting the nearest target anyway. So having more range doesn't really matter. It just stops them from walking forward. The set that just aren't a lot of good uses for this. Maybe in a future set there would be a good use for this. I'd also like to bring up the fact that this item just doesn't work on some units. Or at least it didn't. Maybe it's fixed. But at the very least, uh, if Darius and Kane's range exceeds their spin, they just are stuck. And then other units just have... My, I don't know the interaction. Wukong, Kha'Zix, Silas... I don't know if more range does anything for them, their jump, their dash. Like, it shouldn't, but it might. I, I wouldn't depend on it, though. Seeker's Arm Guard. 25 AP, 25 armor, 25 MR. Takedowns increase the holder's armor, magic resist, and ability power by 10. Increase to 15 if they score the kill. This looks like a Silas, maybe Darius, maybe Diana the Asshole item. Like, this is a generic AP bruiser carry item. It's okay on tanks, as long as they're able to get takedowns. Takedowns being kill or assist. So if they participate in a kill, like, they'll benefit. And most tanks skill with AP. And they also like tank stats, so that's fine. So it, it just depends on how reliably they will get takedowns. So if you are to put this on a tank, 
Uh, you want ones that can hit a lot of units. On backliners, it's okay, because it's ramping AP. You want to put it on stuff that's going to kill. I was a bit low on some backline carries when making this, but it's probably not as bad as I made it seem, because at the very least, these units are going to be getting takedowns reliably. It's, but I'm not quite sure how much better this would be than just another traditional AP item like Death Cap. Uh, this is also very good on all hero augments. All five of them scale well with AP and or armor and MR. So, I mean, all, I think all of them scale well with armor and MR, and then most of them scale well with AP. At worst, AP is like at least usable. And so this is good on stuff like that. Silver Mirror Dawn. This item is crazy. It's 165 AD, 50 armor, 50 magic resist, immunity to stuns, and the holder's attack stun the target for 0.8 seconds. The caveat is that the holder's attack speed is locked at 0.5. Now, 0.5 doesn't seem that low, but that's one auto every two seconds, which can cripple a lot of champions. The problem with this is that while you're not going to be locking in damage by any means, your ability to generate mana is drastically reduced. The best users for this are those that can work around this. Riven and Wukong have very low mana costs. With a blue up, it's very easy for them to get their cast off, and as a result, they don't really suffer from the drawbacks of this. Irela is another one who doesn't really care that much about block attack speed. Her blades will move slower, but everything else is very nice. From here, I'd say melee champions would benefit more from than ranged champions because melee champions can be hit to generate mana, whereas ranged champions really don't have that option. As a result, uh, th these units aren't going to cast until like 14, 16, 18 seconds into a fight, and by then they're missing. Like at that point, they're missing out on a lot of potential damage, even if their auto attacks are fine. Spectral Cutlass. Uh, at combat start, teleport the holder to the mirror text on the up enemy side of the board. After 8 seconds, they go back to their original location. Uh, the item gives 40 AD and 20% crit. This item is very good on units that have the ability to kill as many units as possible in those 8 seconds. The best users are those with good AoE that's easy to access. Uh, in 8 seconds, Tristana, Kane. Kiana, Wukong, they can all realistically cast and kill multiple people with their AoE. Gnar might be in this boat, but I'm not really sure, because you'd have to get good alignment. I mean, you control the Hex, but you're not controlling who you're fighting, so you might not get a perfectly lined up spot. At least Kiana will dash to help herself do so, but the rest of these units probably will maybe kill like one target, maybe two if they're lucky, which isn't bad at all, but it's just not as good as the others. A little worse, I'd say, are the jumpers, Yone, Kha'Zix, because the like with the other example with Prowler's Claw, uh, this might just mess up their their dash. Yone will jump to he'll be he will be casting and dash away from the targets towards the end of the duration, so you're kind of losing a couple seconds of him hitting backline. If there was a way to like mana lock him or something beforehand, I mean that'd be not bad. But like if he jumps away, you just have to hope that he's jumping to the opposite side of the back line and not the front line. Suspicious trench coat. Uh, this one is very broken, but I don't think people have considered some of the things that you can do with it and why it's like probably one of the strongest artifacts. It gives 250 health, 25 attack speed, which are very universal stats. Once per combat at 50% health, the holder splits into three copies of themselves, each with 33% of their max health. They keep their, their items. So, that's one thing to consider. This is absolutely absurd on units with CC. Like, really good, reliable CC. Uh, Nautilus uh, can get three Nautilus casts. Uh, if you position him in a way where he's take, like on the edge of your front line, he can proc it not have cast yet and then he has three Nautiluses and then all three of them will cast and uh yeah that's pretty good. Uh Udir has his safety net in his revive in that even if he doesn't get his first cast off, he's still you still have three Udirs who all have a second life, which is very unpleasant for the enemy backline. 
You also have the option to have three Lissandras. Her being a two range unit means she can reasonably die early, or at least be damaged early, but not reliably be killed. So you'll have your th three Lissandras, and they probably will live quite a bit. And you can generate loot from all of them. Other units that would benefit from this are units with like self synergy. Uh, I like Thresh and Amumu because they can help each other out. Uh, Shen kind of similar. Orn, uh, if they call cast, they can print multiple items for your team, and that's always nice. Uh, Galio can taunt that, can take aggro from each other. Uh, and then other units that are just kind of good with it, I think would be like set any, and you can set other Annie's up with the burn. Otherwise, it's okay on melee units. On tanks, it's fine. If they have a good shield, it's probably okay. Something that's like percent health or like damage reduction might not be as good because they have a lot less health to work with. Because even if they... Because the thing is, this isn't an aggro drop. Meaning, once they split, they'll be focused. So you want something that has a good amount of destruction otherwise. So I'd say units with like... That would take up a good amount of space with like... Dashes, Silas, Kiana, Kazakh, Kiana might be good. I'd say like pure like carry units, like Kane might not be as good because they might all be focus fired. I mean, the ideal case is that they overwhelm the backline, but if you, you can only maybe guarantee one of them will start walking to backline when it procs, so it's hard to tell how useful it is on a carry. And for ranged units, I think it's very situational. I think it's okay on units that have some kind of survival capability, either with like Faded, Lifesteal, Lux Stun, uh, Tristana Jump, Kindred Jump, Janna Shields. But like the pure stationary backline units, realistically, by the time that procs, all of, they're just going to die anyway to whatever killed them. So I wouldn't really go out on them. Talisman of Ascension. This one is also very broken. 400 health, 20 AD, 20 AP. After 18 seconds, gain 100% max health and 150% increased damage for the rest of combat. 18 seconds is a lot, but so is 100% max health and 150% damage. So the realistically, the best users will be champions that will live long enough to get the proc and who actually use both stats. Uh, so the clear best users, I would say, are Bruiser carries and Annie, who has a lot of health. So Riven, Silas. Uh, Riven early game is practically unkillable. Uh, if you, as long as you like keep her kind of safe in like the middle of the front line, uh, there isn't usually enough damage to, to prevent her from blocking it, and then she'll just automatically win. Uh, later in the game, Silas does the same thing and is just a different carry. But uh, in the new patch, Riven reroll might be possible. So. Either might be fine, and then Annie just similarly gets a lot of health from her cast and does a lot of damage. You can kind of try to RNG it and hope that your frontline main tank survives long enough to proc it. Certain frontline champions that have enough damage to kill uh, could benefit a lot from this, but it's a gamble as to whether they're going to live that long. Tom Kench, Diana, Jogath, Orn, uh, Nar can kind of fit in this boat, but you have to protect him a little bit because you're not building him as a tank usually. Another one that I think might be super underrated is Rek'Sai because her damage scales with her health. So you're getting 100% max health and 150% increased damage, which for Rek'Sai is effectively 300% increased damage, which, I mean, Rek'Sai isn't known for doing damage, but I mean, if it's increased by 300% and you try to play around there a little bit with Bruiser and maybe like 2 Dryad. Like, that's probably like at least like 1200 damage in an AoE that stuns. Like, that's pretty good, I think. Oh, yeah, I'd also like to mention that all five hero arguments scale incredibly well with this and have the tools to serve. Like, you want to play for them to survive late in any way. I think all five of them are scaling augments, so... It's the same kind of condition you're playing around, and uh, after 18 seconds, your your augment carry will be truly unkillable. But otherwise, it's kind of okay. Otherwise, 
it's safe-ish on backline units, but they're not really benefiting from the health. And fights are pretty swingy regardless. If you're if you put it on a frontline carry, and they live the 18 seconds, you probably were going to win that fight anyway. So, I mean, this makes it more guaranteed, but like, how much it actually does for them, it's hard to say. Normally with frontline carries, you want to try to win the fight as much fast as possible. And then with backline carries, it's kind of the same thing, whereas at 18 seconds, like, the fight has to end in some way or another. I would say the better backline units that would benefit are the ones with good AoE. Uh, maybe like the trick shots, uh, or maybe a Huey. But otherwise, it's not super. It's not that much different from another item. One who I might have underrated is Huey, because if he does get his cast off after rocking Talisman, uh, he might just kill the board. Uh, the rest of these units might struggle a bit to actually. Even if they have the damage, they might struggle to properly win. Unending Despair, 400 health, 40 armor. When a shield breaks on the holder, 100% of that shield's value is dealt as damage to the nearest enemy as magic damage. This is just good on big shielders indiscriminately. You put it on your frontline tank that shields. You can, I mean, the other route is to put it on Janna or like a your frontliner with Janna, which is probably going to be like Diana, but that's not super reliable. Uh, Rakan's also a decent holder. He gets a pretty big shield. Um, otherwise, just anything that has a shield or that can get a shield. The stats on the item are just generically good main tank stats, so I would just put it on your main tank and not think about it too much as long as they're a champion that shields. And lastly, we have Wits End, which does a lot of things and is very good. The item gives 30% attack speed, 30 magic resist, attack steal 42 bonus magic damage, and Wits End heals the holder for 35% of all magic damage dealt. Uh, damage increases spaces on stage. Wits End damage, I think, like, I don't know if it was changed, but it can scale, it goes to like 100 or like 200 or something by the later stages. So the, like, the damage is like relevant late game. There's many components to this, and I don't think everyone considered like the, the different parts to this. So this generically sounds like a good bard item, just because he's getting a lot of attack seed, and on hit is quite good on him. Other good users are units that deal magic damage, that heal a lot, preferably ones that auto attack. I think, I think Darius is another very viable option with this, as this gives him pretty much everything he wants. He like, gives him attack speed, more damage on his autos, and it, funks, it works as a healing item for him, because most of his damage is magic anyway. Diana played as a carry is kind of similar, just not as a common. Udyr might be absolutely broken with this. In his tiger form, he might just one-shot units. I haven't tried it, but it's possible with how spell works. Otherwise, the benefit of this item just kind of scales with how easily they can apply it, or how much they benefit from the healing. Uh, you can set to both, Bali Rare, Yasuo, uh, Irelia. If you treat it as just a healing item, kind of, with a little bit of attack speed, you have Silas, Lissandra, Kog'Maw, Kindred, and you can treat it as just an on-hit item with, like, Trisana, Kiana. And it's just, like, generically okay, otherwise on ranged units, uh, that want to be attacking a bit. And that's it. I might have missed some stuff, but I think I covered most of the use cases. Once again, if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more. It really means a lot. Anyway, have a good one, everyone.